traveler. Paimon. Kanich! Fancy meeting you here! We've actually been looking for you. I'll get straight to the point. I hear you accepted a proposal from Elder Trinidad. Oh! The, uh, Turnfire Knight, you mean. Uh, you were still his first choice. It's just... Oh, jeez. Um, it's not what it looks like, promise. Chill, it's cool. I only mention it because there's something you should know. And I suspect Elder Trinidad hasn't been completely forthcoming with you. His true intention is to resolve the Mountain King problem once and for all. Once and for all? You mean this'll be the last Turnfire Knight ever? That's right. He wants to use you to send the Mountain King to the Night Kingdom. To the Night Kingdom? You mean... To his death. Whoa, 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 are you serious right now? You shouldn't go blurting out accusations like that. I could get you in trouble. Too blunt? Okay. I'll phrase it more gently. There is potentially a possibility that Elder Trinidad may be hoping that during the course of the ceremony, you kill the Mountain King dead. But that's ridiculous! He told us the Mountain King is a living symbol of your tribe's glory! And that glory comes at a price. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. Ah, uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Mm hmm? She likely won't be the last to lose her life either. Still, is killing the Mountain King really the only way? It seems so extreme! The Mountain King is a unique case when it comes to abyssal contamination. It's eaten away at him for so long that it has consumed him entirely, and the damage is irreversible. That evil power has both driven him insane and kept him alive over the centuries. So, to look at it one way, once it's completely purged from his body, the Mountain King will finally be able to rest in peace. In past ceremonies, we've only purged around half of the abyssal power, this was to strike a balance. To keep him alive, but also keep him asleep. Trinidad didn't say anything about how much power he wanted us to purge, but he did say there were some more details to go over before the ceremony. Then it sounds like you'll know for sure soon enough. If he really asked us to kill the Mountain King, what should we do? I know this must come as quite a shock, so I suggest you act like you didn't hear anything for now. But would you have time to visit the Chief after your meeting with Elder Trinidad? I'd like to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? One that comes at a very reasonable price. I'm sure you have plenty of other questions, but we can talk more later. Good. See you soon. Mighty Outlanders, you have returned. Did you have a good rest? It was... Uh, pretty good, yeah. Glad to hear it. Things are progressing very smoothly on my end. Many of the Elders have heard of your heroic deeds, including the Chief. They all speak very favorably of you. There are still those who insist that the ceremony should be performed by the bearer of the Malipo name. <laughs> but they're just stuck in the past. We need to move with the times. Doesn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. Mm. So, now, it's time for us to discuss the finer details of the ceremony. 
We covered the fire lighting part of the proceedings yesterday. The next part is the purification of the Mountain King. It's quite simple. You just need to use the sacred flame. We've done it plenty of times before, and it's always very routine. I'm sure you won't have any problems. One point I'd like to stress, though, is that you need to burn away as much of the abyssal energy as you possibly can. The more we dispel, the longer the Mountain King will remain asleep. Asleep, huh? Precisely. In previous years, the Flame Bearer has often been unable to dispel a sufficient amount of abyssal energy. That's the only reason why we have to perform the ceremony on a regular basis. But I understand that you have a lot of experience fighting against the Abyss, and you seemed to wield the Sacred Flame quite effortlessly yesterday. With your help, I'm optimistic this time we can dispel all the remaining abyssal energy from the Mountain King's body, freeing us from this ever-looming threat for many years to come. Traveler? So this doesn't phase you at all, huh? You clearly have a lot of confidence in yourself. <laughs> That's all you really need to know? The ceremony's in three days. I'll come and fetch you when we're ready. In the meantime, feel free to take a look around our settlement. It would mean a lot to the elders if you got to know some of our people. And if you wouldn't mind helping them out with a few errands here and there, that would be even better. So now we have extra errands to run? Maybe we should add a little extra to the price. <laughs> Just a humble suggestion, that's all. It will help you gain the respect of our people, and as a mighty hero, I truly believe that's what you deserve. I'll be sticking around for the next few days, so if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Seems like Kanich was right. We should go meet up with him right away. Here. Kanich! Elder Trinidad said that! I can tell. It's written on your faces. Is that the Traveler and Paimon? Uh, forgive me for not being there to welcome you on your arrival. That should have been my duty as Chief. Hello, Chief Waina. I only heard the news from Trinidad yesterday, so I asked Kanich to invite you over for a quick chat. I believe Kinich has already filled you in, so I'll get straight to the point. Firstly, I fully endorse your appointment as flame bearers for the upcoming Turnfire Night. However, I would like to request that you take steps to ensure the Mountain King's safety. Every child of our tribe grows up hearing the tales of our heroes. From Yupanki the Firebringer, to Burkina and the Mountain King who fought against the Abyss. This is our history and our heritage, the source of our pride and the center of our faith. To kill the Mountain King would be to destroy our spirit. I would never be able to face our ancestors in the Night Kingdom. Nana's death was a great tragedy, and I do not blame Trinidad for the actions he has taken. Nevertheless, I cannot allow any harm to come to the Mountain King. The very roots of our identity are at stake. <sighs> My honored guests, Please give this matter your serious consideration. Uh, perhaps there is, but despite all our attempts to contain the situation over the years, we've not found it. Right now, I should like to hear where you stand on this matter. Though I sense that your mind is not yet made up, I'm still comforted by your words. There are three days left before the ceremony. I hope they will bring you clarity. So, Kanich, earlier you were saying that... Let's walk and talk. I'll show you around the tribe. That works too. Paimon needs to get some air after this. Kanich, 
Paimon finally understands why you turned Trinidad down. You knew what he was planning, didn't you? That's why you didn't want to be the flame bearer this time, because it's a double-edged sword! The whole Mora thing was just a sneaky excuse. Double-edged sword is right. But my response wasn't merely an excuse. To solve this exceptional problem, an exceptional price must be paid. I'm working on it. Really? Well, come on then, let's hear it! In a moment. Didn't you have a question you were about to ask me? Oh, yeah. What was it again? Oh, right! We need to talk about a how. He's completely unhinged. I agree that he has a problem. He needs disciplining, so I hired him a teacher. You got him a teacher? Oh, Paimon would love to see him get scolded for bad behavior. Anyway, moving on. When we ran into a how, he said you two were investigating some abyss thing together. Is that related to the whole Mountain King situation? Yes, that's the angle I've been working on. I'm a Saurian hunter, but I occasionally hunt the abyss too. One time I was pursuing some purple demonic dogs when I accidentally entered a hidden space. I did some research after the fact. Apparently they're known as beastly rifts, and there are many of them of all different sizes. That's where those purple dogs were coming from. So... So, if we can locate one of these beastly rifts, clear the monsters out, and move the Mountain King inside, he'd be able to continue living, but without posing a threat to the tribe. Whoa, that sounds kind of crazy. Would it really work? It's not without its risks, of course. There's a lot of unknowns in the equation. For instance, for all we know, a prolonged period inside the rift could make the Mountain King's condition worse. Still, we desperately need something like this, even just as a temporary measure. You've seen the conflict the issue is causing in our tribe for yourselves, and believe me, it's been a long time coming. The Chief is adamant about keeping the Mountain King alive. Whatever happens. Paimon can understand. It's less about the Mountain King and more about preserving your culture and heritage. Yes, but on the flip side, you've got people like Elder Trinidad, who is more concerned about protecting the people he cares about now and into the future. And he has every right to take that view. It's one thing to try and preserve the last remnants of a glorious past, but making your kin pay the price for it? No one can seriously tell them that's a fair trade. You're right. There's no easy answers here. Let's leave that to one side for a moment and assume we go with your plan. How do you actually intend to find one of these beastly rifts? Because at least in our experience, the dogs open the rifts when they want to attack us, not the other way around. I think I know a way. You have any better ideas? Not at the moment, but... It just feels like using the power of the Abyss for our own ends isn't gonna end well. After all, the Abyss is what turned the Mountain King into a monster in the first place! People are gonna think you've lost your marbles! If it doesn't end well, then that's the price we pay. Everything in the world comes at a price. Even when Yuponki, the Firebringer, stole the Turnfire, it cost him dearly. The Mountain King's erratic outbursts have brought tensions within the tribe to a boiling point. Unless this gets resolved quickly, everyone will be stuck in a stalemate. All right. So what's this deal you wanted to make with us? We're hardly experts on exploiting abyssal power. All I need you to do is keep people away from me. I'm getting harassed on a daily basis by people trying to convince me to be the flame bearer. I can't afford to waste all my energy dealing with them. If you help me out, there will be a gift for you in return. Ooh, what kind of gift? Something well worth your while, I'd say. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Integrate yourself with the tribes people, so everyone comes to terms with the fact that we have a new flame bearer. That way, I won't have an endless stream of people coming to beg me to join the ceremony, and I can focus on finding a way to summon the beastly rift. Then, when the day of the ceremony comes, we'll move the Mountain King into his new home. That sounds pretty crazy. Even for a daredevil like you, that's dangerous. 
And even if it works, what if neither Chief Wyna nor Elder Trinidad are happy with it? Have you thought about what you'd do then? At least the two of them would finally be on the same side of the issue. Leaving only me on the opposing side. The tribe needs leaders like them far more than a Saurian hunter for hire like me. <laughs> Can I take that to mean that we have a deal? For sure. And who knows, maybe we'll come up with an even better solution to all of this in the next couple of days. Great. Well, for the next couple of days, please spend some time among the tribe and lend a hand wherever you can. I'm sure everyone will be swept off their feet when they meet our new flame bearer. Good luck to us both. Whoa, whoa, watch your footing. Uh, in the sky, too. Right. I heard you made it back from the Night Kingdom. Very impressive. Considering your courage, conviction, and strength, I'd say you're the most outstanding warriors I've ever met. If only I could be more like you. 
What? So that's what happened. Malco, he chose to... I'm sorry, it's hard to express what I'm feeling right now. Even though we're separated by death, we still managed to accomplish something together. It's like we had the chance to fight side by side again. I'll finally be able to get a good night's sleep now. Malco, my friend, just keep waiting. We'll be together again one day. Seriously?
How can you call the Mountain King a monster? Because he hurt a lot of people! And look what happened to Nana! But it wasn't on purpose! The Mountain King is sick, that's all! He's been hurt by the Abyss! That's true, but the fact remains that he's now a threat to all of us! How can you be so harsh to someone who's sick? If you don't take back what you just said, I don't know if we can carry on being friends! Koba, Huni, what's wrong? Huni's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. It's not right. He's our hero. Hmm. Once upon a time, maybe. But not anymore. <sighs> Yesterday, maybe. But not anymore. Toba? Oh, fine. I guess my dad is right. Things change, and you just have to accept it and move forward. As of today, our friendship is over. There's no going back. Oh, come on. Cut it out, you two. We have some great news to tell you. The Traveler is going to be the flame bearer for the next Turnfire Night. She's going to do a beautiful ceremony and cure the Mountain King's illness for good. What? Really? So that's what my dad wanted to talk to you about? To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kanich. Wait, speaking of Kanich, where even is that guy? Oh yeah, good question. Is he not coming to the ceremony anymore? We can get him to come, but if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. He'll be sure to give you both a piece of his mind. No, we can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't afford to make such a bad first impression. I didn't mean to argue with Toba. All he said was that the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was the one who turned it into a fight. Yeah, if you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would have come to look for the baby Saurians with you. <sighs> All right, well... Because it's the Traveler and Paimon and Kanich, I'm sorry, Toba. 
I'm sorry for all the mean things I said about the Mountain King. Dad just really misses Nana. And I was really upset that she's gone, too. Huh? Oh. Uh... I shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did, either. It wasn't very nice of me. For the Traveler and Paimon can each, and for Nana. I'm sorry, too, Huni. That's more like it. Now you're best friends again! Guess so. Tilba, if I ever say something mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I say it to someone else, and not you. I'd better go buy some colored cloth for my dad now. He needs it for turn fire night. Let's play again some other time. See you, Toba. See you, Traveler and Paimon. Okay. I'll head home as well, then. See you next time. Okay, take care, you two. <sighs> Even though they said they're sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Hmm... Let's just hope we can solve this once and for all. Come on, let's move on! A rehearsal for the Turnfire Night dance. Ooh, there's a dance involved? Kinda wants to learn too! You don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? It's rare to see a new face around the tribe these days. I thought everyone would be keeping away. I. Uh, why do you say that? Because of the Turnfire Night, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. This isn't one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know that the flame bearer this time is actually gonna be an outsider? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. I would have loved to meet them in person. What? Oh, it's you? Man, oh man. <laughs> well, this is a nice surprise. It's funny. I was just thinking that I'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Then suddenly, there you are. <laughs> Must be my lucky day. <laughs> um, you're not taking part in the Turnfire Night? How come? You're not an outsider too, are you? <laughs> you must be joking. Watch this. Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better-looking guys who dances beneath the pillars of the Sacred Flame. Been doing it a few years. Always gets the ladies out to watch. <laughs> oh, very impressive. So why'd you quit? Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our elders' Saurian companions even lost her life not long ago. The question is, what are we going to do about this in the long term? But our leaders don't have any answers for us. They're probably too busy fighting about it amongst themselves. The way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah, it's a great opportunity to go see the world. As every male scion of the canopy knows, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forwards. We take pride in that. I won't forget my roots. <laughs> I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test. Find a decent quality relic, and they'll make me a member. What's the Saurian Relics Association? You've never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants from that age. Speaking of which, 
the guy who was Flamebearer before you. I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that time. A how? A how's a relic from an ancient Saurian civilization? Oh, yeah, him. So you know those two already, huh? Then, do you know how they met? It was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folks say that the kind of contract usually comes with a huge hidden cost. Really? That sounds ominous. Who knows? But if it's true, Kanich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back, and it looked to me like it was depicting a Saurian and a human involved in some kind of Saurian-era contract ritual. Oh, does that count as a relic, then? You bet it does. I was all ready to go take a picture of it and use it as my entry ticket to the association. But after all the abyssal activity recently, I heard that area's been overrun by monsters. The best laid plans, huh? I'll just have to wait and see if things improve. Or... You look like you know your way around a fight. I don't suppose there's any chance you'd be able to help? If all you need to get is a picture, that should be pretty achievable, right? The Traveler deals with monsters all the time. It's a piece of cake! Wait, you're seriously gonna help me out? Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the things we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Pyro Archon above, you two have hearts of gold, you know that? You're the kind of people who could dive into the turn fire deep in the bowels of the Night Kingdom, and it wouldn't burn a single hair off your head. Of course it is. All right, come with me. I'll show you the way. There it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alrighty then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm not about to cramp your style. Late bear. Emerge, right here. Transfixed. Stop right there! Stand down! That should be the last of them. It's a good thing Tiago had the sense to stay in his hiding place, or things could have gotten really hairy for him. Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a mural. Hmm, true. Now that you mention it, most ancient murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like someone with a paintbrush got bored and started doodling. It does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian, and a human. So, is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looked like? Eh, whatever. We're not here to decipher it. Just photograph it. Tiago. 
Surge, right now. Well, what do we have here? Tell me that's everything. You've been robbed? Oh, Ponche. And I thought my luck was bad. Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap-toothed goon stole it from me. Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let me take a look. Uh, yep, that's the one. Pyro Archon above, you two are superhumans. Hey, Ponche, come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Traveler and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? I don't think so. My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, super friendly, that you helped him out, and that you're gonna be our flame bearers this turn fire night. Oh, so you're Toba's uncle. Great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we've managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone speaks incredibly highly of them. Seriously. Really? All I want is to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our history. On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. 
And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings, including my entire manuscript. That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him. Lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student. If only for Toba and Tiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. See what I mean, Ponche? Now you've run into these two, your luck's about to change, big time. I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you. things back <sighs> what do you want now you old bum god you're a waste of space prepare to get shoved butt first into a tree hollow oh what's this brought a little bodyguard with you huh all right let's see what you've got what's this eat dirt suckers Warriors, heroes, gods, and kings, I can't run any longer. Please, I don't have your stuff anymore. Have mercy. Oh, yeah? Well, where is it then? I... I threw it away. You threw it away? The old bum's bag didn't have a single mora in it. Just a tatty old book, worn out pens, and some old rags. All that time lying in wait was for nothing. I was so mad, I just threw all of it away. Hmm... Is that really the truth? Okay then, where did you throw it away? The same place you found me! Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth! May all my worldly possessions be turned to ash by turn fire if I'm lying! Okay, that's a pretty strong oath. What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth! Right. Let's hope nobody gets to the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. Although the turn fire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzatlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of this ancient name in recorded history. Each one of them died of non-natural causes, as if the specter of the Turnfire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name-bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies Turnfire. What an incredible work on ancient name philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. Let me see, the author is... Ponche. Nice. A gentleman and a scholar. Uh, silence, book muncher. The great Kahula Howe will suffer your droning voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical records? <laughs> joy? 
What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price? What? <sighs> You're saying Kanichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to take over his body? When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great ghoul how demands to know! Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us Abyss Order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kahulahau is sheer vanity! And if that day ever comes, oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about Doomsday. Here's what I know, based on countless historical texts. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms, to heavenly thrones, to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle, thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's spirit. And you, great Kahul Ahau, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now, let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of that age still remain inside you. We're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all of my hard work was for nothing? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points, at least? The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the turn fire night it's because I hoped that maybe it might help us find a way through these trying times. But now... Well, not exactly. But I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipo. Panche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain remnants of Shibalanke's power.